Hello and welcome back to Flexo.expert Pills. Raise your hand if you've never had problems with things like strikes, bouncing, strike through, gear marks, bending, or similars in Flexo. I think anyone dealing with flexography has experienced similar problems at least once in their career. They are, of course, defects in printing showing up as a chattering pattern that need to be addressed and resolved. The reason for the image that you see here is because in the Italian language we describe these defects with something like a roller shutter effect. But there are different types of roller shutters, so there are different reasons behind their origin. Let's start from prepress, because one of these defects, known as bending, is actually a prepress issue. The defect is visible on vignettes when a sufficient number of grey levels is not available to reproduce the fading. To calculate the levels of grey that are available at a given screen ruling and plate making imaging resolution, you can use the formula that you see on the screen. Remember, we use 8-bit devices, so that means 2 to the 8th, thus maximum 256 levels are available. Of course, you are working with images with the correct resolution for the intended line screen, aren't you? You know, but the problem that mostly affects flexo printing is not much numerical from prepress, but it is pretty more mechanical. It shows like an intermittent slurring on the printed area across the printing width. What are the causes of these defects? In old gear presses, the main reason for strakes was actually gears. It could happen that the teeth were not meshing correctly, maybe due to wrong plate package setup or wrong diameter of the plate cylinder. When the impression was set, the primitive diameters of the gears were not in correct contact. This could create this intermittent hit on the shoulder of the tooth that reflected on final print, producing a chattering slurring on print. This is what we describe as gear bending. Modern flexo printing presses today are built without gears, they are gearless. Each cylinder is driven by an independent motor, and in gearless presses the rotation of the cylinder is controlled by encoders that adjust the movement and the spin. The encoder makes numerous micro adjustments of the rotation based on its resolution. A low precision of the encoder can reflect in speed changes that produce an intermittent slurring of the printing surface, and therefore horizontal strakes. They are similar to gear marks, but smaller, finer. But you know, it's not just uh, about electronics. The mechanical structure of the press is extremely important. The thickness of the shoulders is one of the most important aspects to guarantee good stability in your printing press. But also the control of the temperature that can subtly change the size of metallic components. The use of carbon fiber components to absorb vibrations and many other innovative solutions are in place today to prevent from such problems to happen. How about plate setup? For sure, the use of bearer bars to ensure a continuous contact of the printing surface of the plate is very helpful, but you know, sometimes it is not enough. When the press mechanics are not in perfect conditions and the plate layout features gaps that leave areas without uh, contact over the repeat length, there can be a bouncing of the plate surface against the analog roll or the impression cylinder. A gap of contact between plate and impression cylinder might bounce the plate against the analogs, and a gap of contact between plate and analogs might bounce the plate against the impression cylinder. This would result in horizontal strakes across the printing width. A proper staggered displacement of printing areas will help to ensure continuous contact of the plate surface against both the analog roll and the substrate. Staying on the printing unit, we could have some problems related to the vibrations of the ducto blade on the surface of the analog roll. An incorrectly polished ceramic surface, perhaps also in combination with a too high metering angle or excessive pressure of the blade, 
are among the typical causes of these vibrations of the ductal blade that will produce irregularities in the ink layer that will transfer to the plate and will be visible in print. Should we mention washboarding on corrugated carton? Why not? Although here we know for sure that the problem is connected to the substrate itself and its interaction with the system. The carton sometimes arrives to the press with a surface that is already showing these typical waves, so in that case we can't do too much to resolve the problem. But you know, sometimes the carton arrives in good conditions to the press, with a nice and smooth surface, but some mechanical settings on the press might stress the substrate and affect the planarity of the surface. Sometimes the choice of a too thin top cover, that is the surface that receives the print, can have a greater influence with a starch-based glue that is of course very sensitive to the humidity and it can also react as a function of ink absorption after the first printing unit. These are just some of the most common causes for these defects, but you may also find their origins connected with plate durometer, the characteristics of mounting tape, the tension of substrate and its smoothness. Don't forget, you can take your basic training in flexography on flexo.training and if you need more advanced or customized training, you're welcome to contact me at any time. Ciao!